In recent years, China and the United States have been engaged in a fierce battle in the chip sector. China's sudden move to impose gallium and germanium export controls caught the entire Western bloc off guard. First, the United States, along with Japan and the Netherlands, had strangled China. Now, China has struck back, shaking the global supply chain. Chips are at the heart of modern technology, and the United States has long sought to maintain its leading position in this sector. Since the trade war began in 2018, the United States has targeted Chinese companies like Huawei and ZTE, restricting high-tech exports. Under Biden's presidency, the intensity has intensified. In October 2022, the U.S. Department of Commerce issued new regulations banning the export of advanced chip manufacturing equipment to China and prohibiting U.S. citizens from working at certain Chinese semiconductor companies. This has directly impacted the upgrading of China's chip industry. For example, companies like Yangtze Memory Technologies, which previously competed strongly in the NAND flash memory market, are now unable to obtain spare parts, significantly reducing production line efficiency. According to market research firm Trendforce, China's share of global NAND production could fall from 31% to 18% by 2025, primarily due to reduced investment in China by South Korean giants like Samsung and SK Hynix. This is a drastic move by the US, exhausting all resources to try to stifle China's technological development. Japan and the Netherlands are also taking action. The US has roped them in. In March 2023, Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry announced an export control list of 23 categories of semiconductor equipment, requiring case-by-case -case review of exports to China. This includes key equipment like photoresist coders and cleaning equipment. The Netherlands announced at the end of June that it would implement a licensing system for ASML's Deep Ultraviolet Lithography Systems, starting in September. ASML is the world's leading lithography system manufacturer, and this move effectively blocks China's path to high-end chips. Chinese chip companies are suddenly under immense pressure, and investment has cooled. Western companies are almost completely refusing to invest in China, prompting China to believe it can no longer sit idly by and must strike back. Therefore, on July 3, 2023, China's Ministry of Commerce and General Administration of Customs jointly issued a document implementing export licensing management for gallium and germanium-related items starting August 1. This includes 14 items, including gallium metal, gallium knit ride, and germanium ingots. Exporting companies must submit applications to prove that the end user is not for military purposes, and the approval process takes approximately 30 working days. This is no casual statement. China accounts for 94% of global gallium production and 83% of germanium. These metals are essential raw materials for chips, aerospace, and automotive batteries. Without them, Western high-tech industries would be stymied. A U.S. Department of Commerce spokesperson responded via email, saying this would exacerbate global supply chain risks, but the U.S. is already promoting diversification. Treasury Secretary Yellen discussed the trade dispute with China during her visit in July, but unfortunately, there was little substantive progress. The U.S. Department of Defense and Electronics Industry have long accumulated inventory, and their domestic mineral development potential is significant, so the impact has been less severe than in the EU. The EU's manufacturing industry is more dependent on imports, and if supply to pillar industries like automotive and electronics is disrupted, factories will have to reduce production. Take Germany, for example. Automakers like Mercedes-Benz and BMW use germanium in their sensors, and shortages directly impact production. The EU called for reducing dependence on China for key raw materials in 2023, but this is easier said than done. Opening a new mine takes years, and environmental approvals are a long process. The market reacted quickly. Following the regulatory announcement on July 4, the share prices of Yunnan Linsung Xinyuan Germanium 
and Yunnan Kaihong Zinc and Germanium hit the daily limit on the Shanghai Stock Exchange, rising 10%. Even Australia's Linus Rare Earths saw its share price rise by 2%. Global gallium prices rose from $641 per kilogram to $934 by early 2025, a 45.7% increase. According to Chinese export data, from January to October 2024, gallium exports fell from 357 tons to 156 tons, and germanium from 278 tons to 136 tons. Western buyers will have to seek alternative sources, with very few options. China will continue to increase its investment in 2024. In February, export licensing was also implemented for tungsten, tellurium, bismuth, molybdenum, and indium. On August 14, controls on antimony were announced, effective September 15. Antimony is used in flame retardants and military applications and China accounts for over half of global production. On December 3, China directly banned the export of antimony, gallium, germanium, and superhard materials to the United States, again citing national security as the reason. This immediately disrupted the U.S. supply chain, forcing the defense and electronics industries to urgently seek alternatives. Antimony prices soared 200%, and exports plummeted 97%. In July 2025, the European Parliament passed a resolution condemning China's rare earth export restrictions and calling for retaliation. But what could they do? Add tariffs. That would only increase costs for their own companies. The EU began to act. Harbeck visited China in June 2024 in an attempt to ease relations, but with little success. Germany is promoting a critical minerals strategy, investing in mining areas in Africa and Australia. The EU as a whole will introduce a Critical Raw Materials Act in 2024, aiming to reduce its reliance on a single country by 2030, with domestic mining accounting for 10% of consumption and recycling accounting for 25%. However, this will take time and money, and in the short term, China will have to endure high prices. The EU's economic growth forecast for 2025 has been lowered by 0.2%, partly due to raw material shortages. In China, regulations are forcing domestic industries to upgrade, and chip self-sufficiency is gradually increasing. Although Yangtze Memory Technologies' market share has declined, its technology is improving, and it will launch a new memory chip model in 2025. Overall, China's move was a steady one, responding to Western sanctions while also taking the initiative. The EU's concerns are not unfounded, they must act quickly, or they will truly be the loser. Although the United States is assertive, it must also consider its actions carefully. The global technological landscape is shifting, and whoever can strike a balance between dependence and independence will have a greater chance of success. This battle is still a long one, so let's wait and see.